Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I had so much fun doing that initial video that I figured let's just keep on with the momentum and you know share some more sketches with you guys. I had received some comments um, from old friends that basically said that the sketch reminded them a lot of the sketches I used to do in high school. And it got me thinking about photo shoots and magazine covers that I used to sketch back in the day. And then I realized that I actually had done some of those recently on Procreate and I figured why not bring those to you and share those with you guys. So the magazine covers and editorial photo shoots that I'm referring to are from the 90s, which is like the supermodel era where we have like Naomi Campbell, Cindy Crawford, Christy Turlington, uh, dominating the fashion magazine covers and all of the runways. And it's, also the time that you have Johnny Versace still alive and designing for the Versace collection and you have what is like the epitome of Karl Lagerfeld at Chanel. I love that era. I love all the mini skirts that he was churning out and everything. It's it just, it, it's iconic. And it's something I wanted to revisit because I know that there's a lot of people that still enjoy that era and there's so much uh, vintage pieces that are very sought after still from that era and it's something that's very still relevant um, so I wanted to make sure that I included that. It'll be a three-part series of those fashion magazine covers or editorial shoots that I did back in high school and the first piece that I wanted to show you is actually a 1992 Gianni Versace ad that features Christy Turlington in this amazing amazing buckle strapped type of harness uh, dress that is just amazing and I, I'm pretty sure that a few celebrities have worn that recently so it's kind of definitely relevant still. Um, this is also the piece that I used to base the Selena sketch for my first video. If you actually are a Selena fan I would really suggest that you watch that first video because it's a lot of fun to make and it kind of shows you step by step the process of coloring, shading, everything that goes into that sketch. Now let's jump into that Gianni Versace sketch. So as you can see here, I'm starting off with a previous sketch and I'm flipping it in order for it to be in the same direction as the inspiration picture. I then go in and sketch her head and her hair and start drawing in the dress with all of the strapping details, the belt, and then I knew I was gonna start getting into the skirt portion of it and I knew it was gonna be a lot of fun because I was gonna be able to recreate all of the folds and draping that the skirt had in the inspo picture, but I also took the liberty to change it a little bit just so that it made more sense with my fashion sketch. Um, after this, I start on her boots and her boots, uh, I had to take a while to really get each strap in and then like go in and adjust them and make them just right. And you will see later on that I will be adding buckle details to these. And here we're getting into the solid colors of the sketch and it's something that I really look forward to. It's something that's really relaxing and I really enjoy doing. Right after this I go into shading which is the first step of what I do for hair and it's really to give you know the highlights and lowlights of like shadows and everything and just give it a more 3D look instead of just having it all one color. And here I continue with the application of solid colors to the rest of the sketch. This always reminds me of those coloring books that, you know, we all had as a kid that featured your favorite cartoon characters that you could get like at your local grocery store or favorite toy store. And it reminds me always like, oh, you know, don't color beyond the lines, um, you know, stuff that you learn as a kid. With this particular sketch, I really enjoy doing the shading of her body just because the picture has such a tan complexion that I was able to use a lot of different colors to achieve this tanned look. And here we're getting into another one of my favorite parts of fashion sketching, which is the shading and contouring of the face. Come through makeup application. <laughs> if you actually really enjoy doing makeup on yourself, I feel like this is another process that you would also enjoy. Just because you get to mimic like the folds of her eyelids with an eyeshadow and you know you definitely get to apply that mascara with you know the eyelash drawing of it and then on this particular sketch 
I wanted her make her lips really full, just because Chrissy Turlington's lips are really full on this. I don't know if they were overdrawn with the makeup, but they just look more full than normal. And I really like how it turned out. At this point, I'm going into her hair with a really fine calligraphy brush and giving her all those low lights um, in the darker areas of her hair. After that, I take a lighter calligraphy brush and I go into her blonde parts and really give her the highlights that she needs. And then after that process, I'll go into the medium toned areas and select a brush that's a little bit darker than that tone and just give it some more depth as well. Shading the dress on this particular sketch was actually a lot of fun. I did have to restrain myself whenever I was shading in the satin parts just so that there would be a big clear difference between that and the leather parts of the skirt, which is the face of the fabric. And then there had to also be a contrast between that and the inside of the skirt, which is a lining, which I'm assuming to be a taffeta fabric or some kind of satin look fabric. I knew I was going to have a lot of fun just because there was so much draping here and so many folds that I could really get into it and make it look real. Um, I really enjoy this part. It's something that you learn in fashion school, which is to mimic and render different types of fabrics onto paper. And now that I'm using Procreate, it's even easier to do that. Adding these tiny gold trim bead details to the edge of the skirt was also a lot of fun but kind of challenging. I had to actually draw each one individually so that it looked as real as possible. And here I'm adding shine and shadow elements to all of the metal details of the dress and I have to say this whole buckle trend has been so popular recently in the past few years that it's actually translated over to menswear as well. Usually menswear gets the trends the last so it's kind of fun to see how impactful his designs still are. And then as you can see here I'm actually going in and placing all the buckles onto her boots and then I'm going in and shading everything in to make it look more like medallion pieces. Also here, if you pay close attention to the skirt, you can actually see where I drew in top stitching at the hems of all of the layers. That just really makes the drawing look a little bit more realistic than having it not have any of those finishes. And here I'm finishing up the sketch by adding the mesh detail to the bodice. And if you look to the right of the screen, you can see me going through all the Procreate brushes to find the perfect one to mimic the inspiration picture on the left. And I land on this one here to finish her off. I have to say, I really like the way she turned out and I'm hoping you guys like her too. What part of the sketch process do you enjoy the most? And can you guess who will be the next 90 supermodel at the end of the week? Remember to hit that like button and make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss the next two 90 supermodel videos. Remember to also follow me on Instagram at MendozaGram for all my completed sketches. And I'll see you guys in the next video.